All right, we have a snowy day outside, but I, for some reason, was inspired to explore Schlitz Park. So I thought we'd take a look at that, just to look at the surrounding area. We've got the Milwaukee River, which obviously was advantageous for businesses to utilize for transportation. This is a little corridor. I can see the Fiserv off in the distance there where the Park East Freeway used to come through. They have since demolished that. There is Water Street right there. It's a building built in 1890, straight ahead of us, the Cream City Brick. We have some buildings from Milwaukee School of Engineering. And just as an aside, the Park East Freeway used to go right over there and end. And then there's a pick and save East Point Plaza on the other side. Uh, in my opinion, thank God that Parkies Freeway didn't go through. They wanted it to go all the way to the lake. So just across the street from St. Joan Antietam High School was grass. They had taken out the an entire block width from about Milwaukee Street all the way down to basically the, the bluff. And they were going to run that freeway south through what I understand is Juno Park. That would have been another tragedy or travesty and luckily that didn't happen. So this is all getting redeveloped which is nice and obviously along the river as well you had tanneries amongst other production and manufacturing facilities. The river water was not pretty for a lot of Milwaukee's history. They had a pumping station, which is now Collectivo on the lakefront. We do have a short video on that as well. On Wisconsin places are cool. But they were pumping lake water into the river and pumping river water into the lake because the river water was so polluted. But now this has gotten developed. It's residential. No longer production manufacturing. And they have saved some of the buildings. You can see a lot of the buildings here on the, whoa, almost took a dive <laughs> on the, on the uh, north end of the river. Got an older building there and then a brand new building next to it. I do like the mix. I know a lot of people want all these older buildings saved and I get it. Ah, oh, look at that cream city brick. But, that's some of the old and some of the new. So we'll take in a Schlitz Park and see what there is here. I've walked through it a few times, but honestly, this is more exploratory for me. So if you're looking for a documentary with all the facts on Schlitz, this is probably not the video, but if you're looking for one to kind of have a walk through and discover some things with me, well, uh, thank you for coming along. So we'll see what it looks like. All right, so in the previous slide, you saw there was kind of a menu, if you will, of different Schlitz, Schlitz buildings. It's tough to say when it's uh, below freezing. Uh, Schlitz buildings and artifacts. So we're gonna check that out. I know walking through here this summer, that yes, they have a little sign over here. So as we get closer, we'll investigate and take a look at what information it gives us. All right, so right along the river here, we have the Schlitz Works Bottling House, uh, which, relatively speaking, is new. Uh, just after World War II, 1947 it was built. Produced a world record, 6.35 million barrels of beer in 1952. It was also adjacent to the Milwaukee Road Line, a railroad originally connecting Lake Michigan at Milwaukee with the Mississippi River at La Crosse. And that it's an old, old rail line. Uh, the rail line's busiest branch was dubbed the Beer Line. You can walk on that now. It's a walking trail. And uh, that'll take you up toward Gordon Park. We also have a video on our Wisconsin Places Are Cool YouTube channel for that. And it says, spanning 16 states with over 10,000 miles of track, the once mighty Milwaukee Road was decommissioned in 1980. So just uh, past this little parking structure here, and the bottling houses on the left is the Milwaukee River. So that's where we came from. So pretty cool.
All right, we will, uh, just to give you kind of an indication of where we are in the Schlitz Park area here, we'll continue up the stairs and see what else we can find. All right, so we have a convenient map of the area. Uh, we are the red dot. So the original building we saw would be that river center. And then the mural building, that's the back of the mural, the smokestacks. And then here we have Bottle House A. And we're going to go check out a sign associated with Bottle House A, just to give you kind of a feel for where we are. That'll take you up to the Brewer's Hill area. That is a residential area where a lot of the folks that worked at the breweries, managed the breweries, even owned the breweries, had, had houses. So this Bottle House A, which is a beautiful building, and I've got some photos in it as, of it as well in the video. Built in 1899. Again, the railroad was key to this. Uh, as a condition of securing the building permit from the city of Milwaukee, the brewery pledged to reduce the number of children employed at the plant. Wow. Separate lunchroom and toilet facilities were constructed for men, boys, women, and girls. And this bottle house and the adjoining bottle house B were phased out in 1947 after construction of the aforementioned building that we saw at the beginning of the video. So you're going to want to pan back a little bit because... This building is incredible, and I really hope there aren't any cars coming the other way. Looks like we're clear. I'm trying to maintain a steady video here, so check this out. What a building. But it's incredible we talk about the mansions and the buildings that are put up in the you know 19th century, and, and we take down so many of them, but you know, the brewery decided that that bottle house, which was built in 1899 after you know, about 50 years wasn't, I wouldn't say relevant anymore, but, but they needed to build something more contemporary, probably with more updated technology after World War II. So here is the brew house. I've inserted some pictures of that as well. 1890 is the year. And again, I'm, I'm catching all this from the signs that, that you're looking at on the video. So it's kind of a neat shot of that. The atrium it's about 1890 and let's see Wisconsin Bridge and Iron Company provided the structural iron work including riveted beams and 80 foot long vaulted roof truss trusses and I actually have the schematics here of the building as well uh, during the prohibition years they do have one of these signs up talking about how uh, Schlitz got into making malt and syrups and sodas and also a, a variation of uh, chocolate, Eline, a play on the Eline family, a play on their last name uh, that owned it. And uh, here we've got some brew house information. First batch, 1891, and they enlarged it in 1902. Kind of cool. Milwaukee Iron Master Cyril Kulnick created the original wrought iron entrance gates. Tough to find uh, good wrought iron these days, and I'm not saying that to be funny. Um, back in the day, I was in the recruiting industry, and I had actually had a client out in just outside of Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, that did wrought iron work. He was one of the few people that could still do that. So it's not open today, unfortunately, but. Here is the brown bottle. I believe uh, at least two decades ago, I was a member of the uh, Beers of the World Club. You had, to, you had 100 beers on the list and you had to check them off. I don't think I got too far, but that is the brown bottle. A beautiful place. And again, I apologize that we're not, we're not getting inside. 
And let's see, up until Prohibition in 1920, union contracts stipulated free beer for employees. Wow. <laughs> and then the Brown Bottle Guest Hall and Hospitality Center uh, came around 1938. Brown Bottle selected by Erwin uh, Eline, then president of the Schlitz Brewing Company, as a tribute to commemorate the brewery's 1912 pioneering achievement in the use of bottles made of brown glass and I have another video that I did of Blatt's and I believe Blatt's was the first brewery to take the bottle idea nationwide so they actually ship their beer in bottles nationwide all right I'm gonna snap a few photos and then uh we'll get back to the video in a moment wow this is really beautiful hopefully you enjoy this All right, I took a little detour. I am on Velar Phillips Street, which corresponds to 4th Street, North 4th. Uh, that's Cherry just below us. This is Court Street adjacent to us. A cool old building there. We've got school, it says public school. Don't know what the original name was. It is now Golda Meir, who actually went to this school and uh, became Prime Minister of Israel from 1969 to 1974. So we're gonna to go to the top of the hill. And again, if you go down the road, the top of the hill, that is a Brewer's Hill area full of some beautiful residences. So let's take a turn here. Also, we are just north of what is referred to as the Haymarket area. So it used to be an area that had a marketplace for people to go buy stuff. And uh, that's the extent to the history of the Haymarket area. But yeah, I just thought this was a beautiful building to take a look at. And then, again, Schlitz uh, is just to the east, right over there. So that's that bottling house at the far end. And that beautiful building as well. So, the street south of us is Galena. We are on Martin Luther King Drive or 3rd Street. And to our right is another aspect of the Golden Meir campus. And I believe to the left as well. But again, what a beautiful building this is. So we're gonna head north on 3rd or MLK Drive see what else we can find around the corner. And we are approaching to the left what will be Walnut. To the right is Pleasant, which actually takes you, when you get to Pleasant and Cass, you will get to uh, the St. Rita's campus. It's now a uh, retirement community, but they actually rebuilt the church there. So some of you may have grown up on the east side and known about St. Rita's church. So. The church, uh, there is a new church there, and they actually utilize all of the old or the original stained glass windows. So it's kind of cool. They save some important artifacts of that church. And I think we're clear. So we will head down the hill and what else we find looks like okay this building was built 1936 you will discover stuff uh, as we go all right so we cut east on um, pleasant which just past those lights is Walnut. And uh, I don't think I'm going out on a limb to say that this is where the horses were kept. This uh, building has the 
sign stables on it, so <laughs> I think that's a pretty safe bet. And uh, so look up north this street, again, Brewers Hill area, that is 2nd Street. And I'll just kind of give you a panoramic view here. So up ahead, again on the corner, is what is now part of the Gold of My Ear campus. Here we got some parking. We should show you. It's kind of kind of a neat sign. Here's Schlitz Park. Gotta love the Cream City brick. And down at the end of this road is where we started this whole tour. So my hands are only slightly frozen. And the snow stayed away enough for us to get through this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. This is uh, was some good exercise, but also I just love exploring these places and hopefully discovering some things with you. Please leave comments, any stories, any things you know about Schlitz. There's so much history that isn't included in this video that we can all share with each other. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like to explore Wisconsin places with me. That is it. Thank you for watching.